Hello there and welcome to another edition of The Big Q. It is estimated that at least 35% of women worldwide have experienced either physical and or sexual intimate partner violence or sexual violence by an unpartner. This does not include sexual harassment at some point in their lives. However, some national studies across the globe uh, show that at least 70% of the women have experienced this form of violence, not forgetting human trafficking, among others. And that's why today I am joined by Dr. Sharon J. Brown. She is a life coach, a mentor, and an author. And she will be telling us more, you know, of all the stories and how women can get empowered, especially when tackling GBV. Thank you very much for making time to with us, Sharon. I'm Thank you for Sharon. having me. Maybe before we start, take us briefly, you know, who is Sharon? Who is Dr. Sharon? What's your story? Well, um, my journey began when I was about five years old. Um, I, too, was uh, a victim of uh, many things. I was um, molested at the age of five. I was um, inappropriately touched. I had many different things that I had to fight my way. And because I began to lose my sense of purpose, my power, my voice, um, because many was telling me that uh, my voice did not matter. Mm. And so by the time I was 18, I was recruited into, and I was a freshman in college, I was recruited into um, the number one adult entertainment in the U.S. And so um, I had no idea what that life would be, and it took me in a spiral of human trafficking. And so today, I had to fight to find that champion voice with inside of myself, <laughs> and I had to begin to listen to the village of people that was around me, that believed in the work that I believe that was inside of me. And I began to grow and I began to believe those things and put legs to my dreams. And I refused to stay in a place of oppression. And so I started doing something about it. Mm. Wow, yes. interesting story. But, you know, I'm looking at a perspective where we have seen, of course, we read the facts from the United Nations women, you know. It says at least 70% Globally, women, yes. you know, attacked, uh, sexually abused, human trafficked, you know, all this. How did you get your voice, you know? Because most women tend to keep quiet. It's not something yes. I want to talk about or Absolutely. anyone, you know. How do, how, how do you do it? Yeah, it, was, it wasn't easy. So when, and that's why I'm so passionate about helping women and girls, because it's not easy. Um, it was very difficult because as you've uh, gone through life and people tell you who you should be and what you should do, and um, it takes a, a word bigger than courage to really stand up, to use your voice. But I had an aunt, I had a, a lady that I met, I had people that I call the village of people that was in my life that reminded me that I was more than what my circumstances was. And those seeds start to grow. I believe them, you know, they gave me a sense of um, power. And then um, there were uh, leaders in our community that um, kept speaking life into me. And so that's what we have to do when we see these things and we see people like that. And so I started in baby steps and those things started to grow in me. And then I began to realize that I am too a giant when it comes to my voice, it belongs to me. And so I regained a little bit back at a time and it gave me a sense of purpose um, that was much bigger than myself, you know? Mm -hmm. Human trafficking, you know, it's, it is something that is affecting the entire globe, including our very own country. Absolutely. You know, how do we deal with this? Because you've been in those shoes, you know, that we have women who come back, fall into depression after this, you know. Yes. How do you come back to life? How, you know, how do you tell your story to, to people? Um, you have to have the proper tools. So for me, I began um, going through a life coaching um, course and I began to uh, obtain a life coach to help me 
to discover my aha, my moments. Um, human trafficking is real. There are so many forms of human trafficking, mm -hmm. um, the myths of human trafficking, um, the misdirection in what we think human trafficking is. Um, most people don't self-identify, so I didn't. I had no idea that I was a victim of human trafficking. Mm -hmm. um, we have labor trafficking. Okay. We have elders um, that we're discovering older people are being trafficked in the U.S. We have um, um, aviculture trafficking. We have, um, this is the modern day slavery. And the, the sad thing is that um, the way that we see it globally mm. um, depicted, it doesn't show our brown and colors face girls, mm -hmm. you understand. Um, it shows other um, groups of different types of people globally, but the main people that are being trafficked is women and girls that looks like me. Mm -hmm. And so we need to change um, and, and pretty much just educate people of what to look for. It's not, and for a very long time in the U.S., we thought it was a third world country issue. <laughs> But then we found out that I live in the number one city in our country for human trafficking. Mm. And we learned that um, even, even in just one city, the predators, we call them pimps. Mm. We call them a lot of different names, Johns. And so they make more money than some of our global leaders make in one day. Wow. So once we're educated about what the facts are, what to look for, who's the victims, who's the predators, who's the buyers, who's the sellers, and what that looks like. There, um, even um, there's a, a report card that the that that is given for worldwide globally. So um, we have, and I believe that um, Rwanda is ranked tier number two on that report card. So that means that we are doing something, you're doing something here. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that laws got put in place in 2018, mm -hmm. but, the, the, but the problem is still here, you know? Mm -hmm. And that means that leaders have decided we're going to do something about this. Mm -hmm. And not just locally, but globally, meaning that they um, are uh, documented that they have gone and gotten girls from mm -hmm. other places that was taken from mm -hmm. here. So the, the work is being done, but the education needs to be there. Um, and so, for instance, if... If we think that most of the girls that are taken away are taken, go into another country, then we've missed the mark. Mm -hmm. Because wherever you see drugs, guns, there is human trafficking. Okay. And we have learned that 80% um, of women and, and even boys that have been exploited, 80% <clears throat> is a large number. It is. 80%, if they've been exploited, then that means they will be trafficked. And that's what happened to me. Mm -hmm. I was being exploited way before I ever got into this industry or this whole vicious war of human trafficking. And so I came from a mother that was a good parent to me. I had a father. Um, and so we can't think of that it's only target for those uh, poverty or those communities that are um, poor or there's a lack of, of what, whatever the area of mm. uh, humanity, mm, you know, mm. every, whatever that area is mm. of a lack. Um, we have to think a little broader than that. Um, we're finding that um, our girls and boys are being lured into human trafficking because you can sell a body over oh. and over, yeah. but you can't sell drugs over and over. Mm -hmm. Once it's used, it's gone. It's gone. Yeah. But this is a trillion dollar international business. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money. Mm. So that means that it's closer to home than, than we, we think. think. Yeah. Yes. And so if we could, um, we are finding that if a woman or a girl is um, in poverty, if it's lack of food, mm -hmm. or if there's a necessity that, that is needed, um, we're also finding it in the educational arena that if there's a disability, if there's a lack of being able to uh, contribute to society in a normal sense, mm -hmm. um, those are target, and the predators know that. Mm. And so it's easy to say, if you need your hair done, 
you know, I'll pay for your hair to get done, but I want a favor also. That is sex yeah. trafficking. It is. That is exploitation. Um, we find it in our workplaces mm -hmm. where um, women are being um, sexual harassed because that is a form of exploitation and trafficking. Mm. So there's so much that needs to be taught. Mm. There's so much education that needs to be, we need to know in our for, first responders, which is what I talk about in my book, the first responders, those are the doctors, the teachers, the healthcare professions, those are the law enforcers, those are the police officers mm. that will go into your districts and go to a home mm -hmm. and it seems like it's not right or something seems like is not don't really add up mm -hmm. then they need to know that this may be a family a mother or a father that's trafficking their daughter, their daughter yeah. yes and so um, when we begin to look at the the global issue then we can begin to peel back the onion mm -hmm. to get closer and closer home. to home mm -hmm. so that we can make sure that we have some safe places mm -hmm. for our girls mm -hmm. and dr. Sharon in your book you you know I found my voice, you know. Today we have women who are looking at you or watching our show and asking, how do I find my voice? Yes. How do they find their voice? How did you find your voice? I had to really learn how to first walk in a place of forgiveness. It's really hard, you know, <laughs> especially when you've been victimized. But I was for so long on the blame game. And although the facts are real, it happened. Mm -hmm. A lot was taken from me. A lot, I lost a lot. It, I don't even know sometimes. It looks almost like a miracle if you really believe in miracles, mm -hmm. you know? But I had to learn how, I had to start working with me. Yourself, yeah. And I had to really be honest with my truths. And a lot of times we don't have safe places to really exp express our truths. And so that's another reason why I'm here. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we need safe places where we can begin to express our hearts, mm -hmm. our pain. Um, there needs to be uh, a, a balance of different type of healthcare professions. Um, also, um, <clears throat> sorry. Also, um, we have found globally that mental illness in the African American or people of the same, uh, globally, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, mental illness is so real. You know, I dealt with depression. I dealt with what we call PTSD, okay. post-traumatic stress sure. disorder. I dealt with a lot of those things, and some things I still deal with, but I, I own it, you know. I don't shy from it. I don't hide. I am... Um, I had to learn how to be that way. So to find your voice, one, you have to be honest. You have to be authentic with you first. You have to walk in a place of forgiveness. And then your dreams will begin to find legs. Mm. You know, and, that, and, and, and sometimes we need help with doing that. We need safe places where mm. we can be honest with those things. Absolutely. Yeah, but it's possible. It is possible. Well, we do take a short break with that. We come back after this. Welcome back and thank you very much for keeping it the BQ. Today we are talking to a life coach and mentor, Dr. Sharon J. Brown, who has been through it all. Like she would say, you know, her book, I Found My Voice, we're talking about women empowerment. Before we went for a break, of course, you, you told us the few things, you know, of women who've been through these traumatic issues. Uh, it is important for them to forgive. It is important for them to be honest, you know. Now you're in Rwanda. To Sharon, what brings you to Rwanda? Wow, I I had a dream. I had a dream. I began to uh, start working on this dream way before I even knew that I would be led here by my heart. And so, I, what brings me here is I started a school. Um, it's a center for women and girls from the age of 12 to 25. And so in this program, I created a curriculum. If I had this when I was a young girl, I believe I never would have been trafficked. 
I never would have been explored it. I would have knew, I would have known my purpose. I would have known um, the power of my voice did matter. Mm -hmm. I would have known that I did um, the things that I dreamed about, they could come true. And so I wanted to do something amazing to create and to help develop champions right here in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. And so I met a, an amazing pastor in the U.S., um, Pastor Ronald, and um, I just shared a dream with him. You know, I just said, you know, I've been wanting to do this. I want to bring my, um, my vision. I believe that I'm supposed to do this internationally. And he said to me, I believe that this will be revolutionary. I believe that you will see yourself in the women and the girls in Rwanda. Mm. And so I just said, okay, I'm just gonna jump. And I did it. And I started out with uh, a few students. Mm -hmm. And so we have class once a week. I Skype over um, from the US. I have a facilitator there. And we really teach practical skills, life skills. We teach how to be able not just find your voice, but how to discover the power within you. Mm. How to be able to find out how to love again, mm. how to forgive again, how to begin to walk out um, your purpose in your journey. And so there, you know, I partner them up with, uh, they have accountability partners. And so they're a, a very diverse group of young women that when they come together, they've learned to love one another. They've learned to trust each other. They check on each other. The, the program is very tight, very strict, but I have seen since last year of a starting mm. a tremendous, a tremendous growth. They, some of them have started their own business. They have really come out of their shyness and their ability to open up and to share their stories. You know, um, I have one student that um, she too is some of the things that I've gone through. All of those have touched some of those ladies. Mm -hmm. Some of them have been raped have a baby because of the rape. Mm -hmm. Some of them are um, raised by a grandmother that is a survivor of the genocide. Mm -hmm. um, some of them, it's, it's a mixture of women that are triumphant, they're hungry, mm -hmm. and they want more. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. they want more. How do you choose them? How do you get them? So this time, the first time we took application, we, um, it was referrals. Okay. A lot of the ladies I had to turn down because we really did not have the capability of being able to sponsor all of them. Is mm -hmm. It was just so many that wanted uh, a, another chance, like something to add to what they were already doing, doing yeah. you know? And um, I just could not um, do more than what we had. However, it is our heart to be able to open this program up to the women of Kigali and Wanda. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it has been just somewhat challenging because we are only, the, the sponsors and the donors that we get are coming from America and from my own personal. So it is, um, there is so much of a need that's needed there. And, um, but we're looking forward to the opportunity of us growing mm -hmm. and be able to do some amazing things here. Mm -hmm. If probably one of our viewers is watching and wants to chip in, to this program that you're working on with women and the young girls, how would they do that? Um, many ways. Um, they can reach us um, on, I, I have our contact information. They can go to treasureboxinternational.org, which is our nonprofit in the U.S. Um, I am Dr. Sharon J. Brown. They can go on our website. And, but we, we're really looking for um, sponsors. We're looking for partners. We we're looking for people that is from this country to say, I believe in what you're doing, and mm -hmm. this is for our women and girls, mm -hmm. because I believe that this is, uh, I was coming through the airport and it says, um, the heartbeat of Africa. And it just touched my heart because I believe that even before I got here, mm -hmm. I was drawn to this country. And so I believe that as we come together and we work together, mm -hmm. that this program will touch so many women, so many girls, 
uh, and touch their lives to the point that they will be triumphant and they too, because everybody desire, desire and deserve to be a champion. Mm. Yeah. Maybe before I let you go, Dr. Sharon, uh, we have women who are watching, um, like I've said, especially the African tradition doesn't give them or us some, you know, uh, the voice to amplify our issues out there and say, I was raped. How yeah. can you help me? I'd rather cry at night at my pillow and sleep. You yes. know, we have a majority of the women uh, who probably go through this. What would be your advice to them, to anyone that's watching and saying, wow, she did it, how can I do it, you know? Uh, what would you, the few tips, you know, to go on with life? Sure. I, I think the first thing is that um, the women that are here, that do have their voices, that we could collaborate together, to raise our voices together, to do not just a conference, but a... <clears throat> Sorry, not just a conference, but a very intimate um, settings where we can do some cell groups or in different districts where we can actually go to the women and we can actually be honest and share our authentic price, you know, our authentic space where we can be able to talk about some of these things so that they can be able to open up and then learn. Uh, maybe there needs to be some training as far as life coaching mm -hmm. so that they will know how to not just to um, reach out, but to how do we get them to move forward, mm. which is the key thing. Mm. And so I think that there's many different things, um, but they should know that um, <laughs> that they do matter and that their voice does matter, and it's okay. Um, there are some people here that I am trying to work with now where we can begin to take this school into the other districts throughout of Kigali into Rwanda where... I'm training ambassadors in my students mm -hmm. that they can do the same work that they're getting. And so when the young women that's 20 and 25, when they see these millennials doing this, they'll feel like, oh, I can do this myself. Mm -hmm. Where we may not be able to reach everyone, but they may be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I'm trying to do at the school also, mm -hmm. is to raise up these young women where they can go into some mm -hmm. of the districts mm -hmm. and be able to show their faces and share their stories and so that the young women and women will be able to connect with that. Mm. Wow. Yes. Well, thank you very much for your powerful story, for, you know, for amplifying other women through, you know, what you do. Thank, thank you, you so for making much time for having to be with me. us. Yeah? Thank you. Thank of course, you. I've been talking to Dr. Sharon J. Brown. Uh, she's a life coach, a mentor. She says, find your voice, you know, be honest with your feelings, be honest with who you are, and you will get there. Well, my name is Fiona Mbabazi. Do keep it the big Q.